There's a weapon that the CIA doesn't want you to know exists. If you're exposed to this weapon, it'll change the way your brain works. It changes your life, turns it upside down. Since the 1950s, there have been countless reported cases of this weapon's effects. The weapon has claimed victims on every continent besides Antarctica. What you're about to hear is a story of government cover-ups, top secret documents, and Cold War era technology. This is not a conventional weapon of mass destruction, but something far more terrifying. A weapon that targets the human mind itself. This weapon, once deployed, has the power to fundamentally alter the way your brain functions. It's not just about changing your thoughts or emotions. It's about rewiring the very essence of who you are. And it's happening right under our noses, every single day. Recently, on the Danny Jones Podcast, Dr. Jack Cruz shed light on some shocking revelations about this mysterious weapon. His insights challenge everything we thought we knew about MKUltra and its modern-day implications. The entire intelligence community of the United States has publicly and vehemently denied these allegations. But as we've learned time and time again, official denials often mask the darkest truths. Let's start at the beginning. In the 1950s, at the height of the Cold War, the CIA launched a top-secret program codenamed MKUltra. On the surface, it was billed as a research initiative to counter Soviet mind control techniques. But beneath this thin veneer of national security lay a far more nefarious agenda. So you may have heard of this program called MKUltra. So MKUltra is the merging of two things. The first thing gets merged is this idea from Dalits that they're going to study it. Then there's another a uh, guy who's a 1937 surgeon, SS guy named Kurt Plotkin. Plotkin worked with the Nazis. His idea was mind control through the use of Mexican peyote. MK Ultra was, in essence, a merging of two distinct ideologies. The first stemmed from the aftermath of the Kennedy assassination in Dallas, where there was a push to study and understand the manipulation of human behavior. The second influence came from a much darker source. Nazi Germany. Kurt Plotner, a surgeon who worked with the SS in 1937, had been experimenting with mind control techniques using Mexican peyote. His work caught the attention of CIA operatives who saw the potential for weaponizing altered states of consciousness. This unholy alliance of American paranoia and Nazi pseudoscience gave birth to one of the most unethical and dangerous programs in US history. Initially, MKUltra focused on drug-based mind control, famously experimenting with LSD and other psychoactive substances. But as the program evolved, it began to explore more subtle and pervasive methods of manipulation. This is where the story takes an unexpected turn towards the realm of electromagnetic weapons, specifically focusing on the effects of blue light on the human brain. They decide to employ it here first. So Delgado finds out that actually it does work. You can do it without wires. You don't have to do brain surgery on the, the animal to do it. And then they ask the next question. They didn't, have to, they didn't have to install anything in the brain? No, they did not. But this was the, the key step. This is the step where I think your audience, you, people find it incredulous when I tell them. The next step was, could you do this using light? and light alone. And it turns out, they found out you could. If you use blue light specifically... The CIA discovered that blue light could be weaponized to affect human behavior and cognitive function. This wasn't just about mood lighting or sleep cycles. They found that concentrated, pulsed blue light could disrupt neural pathways, alter decision-making processes, and even induce a state of heightened suggestibility. But why blue light? The answer lies in our biology. Our eyes have specialized receptors called intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells, IPRGCs, that are particularly sensitive to blue light. These cells don't just affect our vision. They're directly connected to parts of the brain that regulate our circadian rhythms, hormone production, and even our emotions. It actually destroys the dopamine reward tracks in your brain. Just so you know, Meta and Google today own those patents. The CIA weaponized this knowledge by manipulating the intensity, frequency, and duration of blue light exposure. They found they could induce a wide range of effects, from subtle mood changes to more dramatic alterations in behavior and cognition. 
But here's where it gets even more sinister. The CIA didn't just keep this technology for covert operations. They began a long-term plan to normalize the use of blue light in everyday life. Google was formed in 1995 when DARPA gave the search algorithm to uh, these two cats from Stanford. You know about Stanford now, right? Mm -hmm. They basically then figure out and perfect the delivery of blue light technology through screens. Think about it. How many hours a day do you spend staring at screens that emit blue light? Your phone, your computer, your TV. They're all bathing you in the very same light that the CIA weaponized decades ago. Who is the big tech company in the 1950s and 60s that were doing this? Turns out that's IBM. And IBM is working on liquid crystal and displays. And I remember this is in the 50s and 60s. You as a young man never saw those TVs until the 90s, mm -hmm. okay? And then it got a boost from who? Obama, who made the analog to digital transition so that you'd have to use what? LCD screens. And then what else did he do? We're gonna ban incandescent bulbs. Why? Because incandescent bulbs not only have fake blue light, but they also have purple and red, which is what you need as the antidote to blue. This isn't just about energy efficiency or better picture quality. It's about creating an environment where we're constantly exposed to the type of light that can be used to manipulate our minds. But the story doesn't end there. As technology has advanced, so too have the methods of mind control. Welcome to MKUltra 2.0, or as it's officially known, the Brain Health Initiative. Guess what MK Ultra is called today? Do you know? Any of your conspiracy boys ever done? I have no clue. Brain Health Initiative set forth in 2013 by President Obama. Do you know where it's based? In Central and South America. Isn't that funny that it's in the same places where you can't find it? And do you know where it's hidden in? Places called Centers of Excellence. This new iteration of MKUltra isn't about crude experiments with LSD or electroshock therapy. It's a sophisticated, multifaceted approach to controlling the human mind using cutting-edge neuroscience and technology. So the Brain Health Initiative comes in. This stuff is being done in places right now. Many of the things that you're seeing uh, in the transhumanist movement is actually being done so now you may start to understand why we have an open border. All the people that have been through these training programs in Central and South America are being let into the United States and they're being deployed in very specific cities. So you want to know why Springfield, Ohio has who they have there. Do you want to know the reason why people are being brought into Alabama? And There's a reason, my friend. Do you understand the game that's going on? The Brain Health Initiative claims to be about improving cognitive function and treating neurological disorders. But beneath this benevolent facade lies a sinister agenda. Using advanced brain-computer interfaces, nanotechnology, and genetic engineering, they're working to create a new generation of humans. Ones that are more compliant, less questioning, and easier to control. 55% of the United States population has been mk ultra through the screen technology. So they're all obedient idiots. But why would they do this? It all comes back to power and control. The same forces that have been manipulating world events for decades. The military industrial complex, big tech, and shadowy government agencies are behind this new push for mind control. Parts of the story that we glanced over that I'm gonna tell you, that I actually told Dr. Alexis, these parts are really gonna infuriate you. So I told you how we got the money laundering thing through drugs and how it started with Castro and Traficante. What if I tell you that <clears throat> the war on drugs part two started with the Iran-Contra affair with Ronald Reagan and Oliver North? But the story doesn't end there. The roots of this program go back even further, intertwining with some of the darkest chapters of recent American history. Remember the Iran-Contra affair? That wasn't just about illegal arms sales. It was part of a larger operation that ties directly into the evolution of MKUltra. The war on drugs, which many of us grew up believing was about public health and safety, was in fact a cover for a massive money laundering operation. This operation, which began with Castro and Traficante, 
evolved into the Iran-Contra affair under Ronald Reagan and Oliver North. The funds generated from this illicit trade didn't just line pockets, they funded black ops programs like MKUltra and its successors. This connection between drug trafficking, covert operations, and mind control research isn't just conspiracy theory, it's documented fact. The same networks that moved drugs and weapons also facilitated the movement of research subjects, scientists, and technology necessary for these clandestine experiments. So where does this leave us? In a world where our minds are under constant assault from technologies designed to control and manipulate us. A world where the very devices we rely on for work and entertainment are potentially rewiring our brains. A world where shadowy government agencies and corporations are working hand in hand to create a populace that's easier to control. But knowledge is power. By understanding these tactics, we can begin to protect ourselves. Use blue light filters on your devices. Be skeptical of health initiatives that seem too good to be true. Question the push towards merging our brains with technology. Most importantly, cultivate your ability to think critically. Engage with diverse sources of information. Challenge your own beliefs and assumptions. The most powerful weapon against mind control is a mind that thinks for itself. Remember, this isn't about paranoia. It's about awareness. The technologies and programs we've discussed are real, documented, and ongoing. But by staying informed and vigilant, we can resist their effects and maintain our autonomy. In the end, the human spirit is resilient. Throughout history, people have resisted oppression and mind control in all its forms. We are not powerless in the face of these technologies. By coming together, sharing information, and supporting each other, we can create a future where technology enhances rather than controls our lives.